Exodus chapter 28. And it begins here, verse 1, it says, And take thou unto thee Aaron, thy brother, and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Elizer, Ethamar, and Aaron's son, and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. You might want to underline the word glory and beauty. So why is he making the garments? For glory and beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him. All right. That he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So who is Aaron ministering unto? The people or God? God. God. So that means that not only do we minister to people, we minister unto God. That's important. All right. So he says, and these are the garments which, which they shall make a breastplate and an ephod and a um, robe and a broidered coat, a miter and a girdle. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Y'all got it? All right. So he says, and they shall take gold and blue. Underline these colors. We're going to come back to them. There should be five of them. Gold and blue and purple and scarlet, or you could call that red, and fine linen. All right. And they shall make the ephod of gold and of blue and the purple of scarlet and fine twine linen with cunning work. And it shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof, so it shall be joined together. Now go back to verse 6 real quick. The word cunning work means that it is skillfully woven together. What is the difference between something being woven together and something being sewn together? I don't know. What is the difference? The, the intertwine is, is the difference. This is woven. Okay. This is sewn. Oh, you're talking about stitching. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this, this is this is sewn on. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it y'all. Help me, y'all. Yeah. Help me All right. So, so there's a difference because you don't want stuff sewn on. Okay, let me back up. How many of you ever had a hole? No. How many of you been poor? Had a hole in your jeans and they patched it and sewed on a patch. Okay. That's a different. I ain't talking about y'all little style y'all do today right, and that right, type of thing right. with your little holes in your jeans, worn jeans, all that like stuff. <laughs> we we our stuff was original. It it happened through the process. We didn't buy them like that. You understand? Right. So so the, the 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 concept is when something is woven, there is not a seam unless something is actually stitched or sewn on. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Right. All right. So this garment. <clears throat> Everything about it is woven together. Only thing that was stitched on was the two arm pieces, but they were woven and then stitched on. All right. That's what that's saying. When you say in verse seven, it says it shall have two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof. So shall it be joined together. And the curious girdle of the ephod, which is upon it, shall be of the same according to the work thereof, even of gold and purple scarlet and fine twine linen. I'm going to come back to these and, and explain these colors as to what they mean. And thou shalt take two onyx, onyx stones and grave, <clears throat> engrave on them, engrave on them the name of the children of Israel. How many? Two. Y'all see that? Six of their names on one stone and the other six names on the rest and on the other stones according to their birth. So, 12 tribes of Israel going to put six on a stone. It's going to be on this shoulder, right? And there's a, there'll be another one stitched. It's going to have six names on the other remainders on this shoulder. And then on the breastplate, it's going to have all 12 tribes by name. Okay? This is important. You said, and, and where it's positioned on the priest's body is important because it's going to point to Christ. 
All right, so with the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, shall thou engrave the two stones with the name of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in uh, ouches of gold, and thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial to the children of Israel. Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial, and thou shalt make ouches of gold and two chains of pure gold at the ends, and of uh, rethen work shalt thou make them, and fasten this change to the ouches. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with conning work, all right, conning work, meaning that it's, it's going to be woven into it. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me bring you out today. How many people went to see uh, Wakanda? Oh, yeah. The movie. What was the name Black, of it? Black Panther. Panther. <laughs> I mean, people see, see the Black Panther. All yeah. right. You remember them talking about they had the uh, the metal and it's woven into their clothes mm -hmm. and it gave them power. So it, it, and so the concept is to be woven together, it means that it is a part of the a weaving machine where it's actually built into the cloth. So it, it, it wouldn't be like somebody just came, this ain't no add on. The gold is actually woven into the fabric of the cloth. All right? It's pretty powerful. So this ain't no cheap robe now. All right? This ain't no cheap robe. This robe was so expensive that when Christ was on the cross dying, after they stripped him, the guards started gambling over his robe at the foot of the cross. All right? Would this garment be heavy? Yes. So I was yes. Heavy here. Yes, it is heavy. Because you remember what is it for? <coughs> Verse 2. Glory and beauty. Glory and beauty. Glory, let me give you a concept, an interesting thing. Let me inject this real quick. Glory is heavy. The glo anytime you hear the word, the first time the word glory is mentioned in the Bible, it's referring to gold and wealth. So when you start talking about glory, glory is heavy. It's wealthy. It's a wealthy, heavy substance. The first time the word glory is mentioned in scripture is when Abraham had gained all this wealth. And, his, and, and I think it was, um, um, was his brother-in-law, I think he got it mad at him. He says, man, you, how, where have you gotten all this glory? So glory is actually connected to wealth, worth. And so when we give God glory, we give God worth, value. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, where to stop? In the middle, somewhere. Fifteen. Okay. All right. And, and thou shalt make the breastplate judgment with conning works out of the work of the ephod, and thou shalt make it of gold, blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, of fine twine linen. Shall thou make it four squares? Shall be. Uh, it shall be being doubled, a span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the bread thereof, and thou shalt set in it settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sardis of topaz. Now we're to breastplate. He's given the stones. There are going to be 12 of these. Topaz, uh, carbonacle, uh, carbonacle. Uh, this shall be the first row, and the second row shall be of emerald and a sapphire and of diamond. The third row of uh, a a, a ligure and agate and amethyst, amethyst. Uh, and the fourth row of beryl and of oxen of jasper, and thou shalt be, uh, they shall be set in stone in their enclosings. And the stone shall be with the names of the children of Israel. So you got the 12 tribes, so it's representing that whole nation according to their names, like the engravings of a signet. Uh, every one of them. Every one with his name shall be according to the twelve tribes, and thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains at the ends of the uh, the 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 the, we the rethen work of pure gold, and thou shalt make upon the breastplate two rings of gold, and shall put the two rings and the two ends in the breastplate, and thou shalt put the two uh, chains of gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate and the other two ends and the other two chains thou shalt fasten in the two ouches and put them in the shoulder pieces in the epoch before it. And thou shalt make two rings of gold and thou shalt put them upon the ends of the breastplate and the border thereof, which is the side of the epoch inward. All right? And the two other rings of gold thou shalt make, <clears throat> thou shalt make and shalt put them in the two sides of the epoch underneath towards the four 
part thereof over against the other coupling together above the curious girdle of Epoch. Let me pause for a minute. How many days, no, how many days, how many scriptures, chapters, did God use to talk about creating the earth? Yeah, maybe three in the beginning where you know, it talks about the earth and the heaven and he created the heavens and the earth and goes through that. Not a lot though, right? No. I think he uses over like, man, 50 some chapters <laughs> to describe 50 some verses you mean. Ver, 50 some uh, verse, yeah, yeah, verses, I'm sorry, even more of that to, to describe the making of the tabernacle. And the making of these garments. And why would he spend so much time what? in detail making that? Hmm. Versus in the beginning, God <laughs> created the heavens and earth. Earth was void without form. Uh, you know, light was over here. Everything was chaotic. So I called it, spoke to the light, spoke to the dark, separated them, created the sky and that type of thing, the land and water. You can go here. You can't go no farther. Here's the land. Here's the water. This type of thing, and then threw man in it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice summer. Right? Yeah. The concept is God, this right here is the tabernacle. Point number one the tabernacle and the priest represented God reestablishing his relationship with man. The earth has nothing to do with God's relationship with us. So he just put that out there, built that, now that's that. And then he's in relationship with Adam. Adam sins, mm -hmm. separates himself. And God goes through really great detail to determine how we got to build this relationship back. Because when you build in a relationship, yeah. you just can't just jump in there. No. Mm -mm. That's not true. Real quick. No. That's not, you know what I'm not real quick. You can't just jump in there real quick. It takes time to build a relationship. Yeah. Worth anything. Worth, hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> if it's going to be worth anything. If it's going to be worth anything, it takes some time. If it's going to have any glory to it, you understand, some, some worth, value, some beauty to it, it's going to take some time. And we need to have reason for everything we do. Whew. This is really good. We've got to have reason for it. So the thought is that all of these words, although they may sound, you know, you read, nah, just get on through with it. Well, all of this stuff is significant because if you don't understand this, you won't understand God. If you don't understand God, my problem is going to be real big. Uh oh. Real big. Why? So it's worth me taking the time to understand the details. <laughs> so that when a problem comes up, it ain't big. Mm -hmm. It's small because we got the details. Yes, go ahead. Since we're on that relationship thing, it is better when you do understand the details of a person. Because, and I, I use this as an example. Go ahead. Uh, he knows, like, I'm a mouthy person and I should be better slow to speak instead of so quick to speak. But because he knows that detail about me, then he'll know sometimes when to touch me. That's Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta sit close. Gotta, Gotta sit, sit close. close. Gotta sit close. <laughs> and, if, and, if, and because I know him, then when I get that touch, I'm like, uh-oh, I, I might not say too much. <laughs> you know? It's, so you know how to That's communicate mm -hmm. even without having to say the words because you understand the detail. Right. And I think that is, I've never seen that in a word like that, but that's critical. Right. So I need to understand the details of God. Yes. Because if I'm going too far mm -hmm. and I'm, he, if I'm close to him. <laughs> he touched me. He can kick, he can kick me on the table, you understand? <laughs> Anybody ever had God kick him on the table? <laughs> so you might not want to, you know, you have that thought. You never had that thought and it just roll in there and it's like, man, I know what I'm getting ready to say next. And then something say, don't, 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 don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Not, not today. Don't, don't say it today. Let's just, let's just hold back a minute. 
And let's not say that today. <laughs> not today. If you're close enough, you know. You gotta be close enough. You know, you can kick it. Yeah. You understand? If you ain't close, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's tough now. It's tough now if you're sitting across the room and I said, no, go on, man. I, if you just look at me, you know, you know, I don't do that. You know, we got signs and stuff, you know, just, you know, we, we got signals. We know how to send signals without, you know, nobody know. You know. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you need to get your signal. Yeah, that type of thing. <laughs> Rub your head or something. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Cup of water, drink. I mean, you know, whatever you got to do, send the signal. I ain't gonna tell y'all what our signals are. Y'all be watching me. So, <laughs> 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 All right. so, so as 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 these things may seem insignificant, they're very very important. <laughs> and I'm explaining them just a little bit. So Aaron shall bear the names. I think verse 29. We're at 30. Thou shalt put in the breastplate the judgment of the Aram, the, the, the Urim, and the Thurman, and, sh- and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord. Aaron shall bear the judgment of children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually, and thou shalt make the robe of the ephod uh, all of blue. Every color is going to be significant. I'm going to explain the colors in a second. And there shall be a hole in the top of it, in the midst thereof. It shall be a binding of woven, worked around about the hole of it, as it were the hole of an abrigan, that is not, that it be not rent. It, you can't tear. He doesn't want it to tear. Okay. okay. Anybody ever bought something cheap? Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, when, when something tears, it typically don't tear. It tears where it's been stitched on. Not where it's been woven. Right, gotcha. Does that make sense? That's important. Now, this is important for the priests. I'm going to go ahead and throw this out here, and this is kind of a clue to something's going to come later. But if a priest ever tear his robe, it disqualifies him to be a priest. Wow. If he ever tears his robe, it disqualifies him to be the priest. He can no longer be the priest. Huh? And beneath upon uh, the hem of that, thou shalt make pomegranates. Now, these are going to be good. I'm going to explain the pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof and bales of gold between them round about. So for every pomegranate, you're going to have a what? Bale. All right. For every pomegranate. And where are these things located? Around. Around the hem. At the ankle. The hem of the garment. All right. So at the hem of the garment now, the bales, I'll go ahead and give you this insight. The pomegranate represents a fruit. Yeah. The bale is a, uh, it's a sound that says that something is going on. Mm-hmm. When you get ready to go into somebody's house, mm-hmm. do you walk in or what's the first thing you do? Ring you ring the doorbell. The doorbell says that I'm, there's somebody out here and I want in. You know, if you come in my house and don't ring the bell, that ain't good news. <laughs> that, there's a problem. You playing with your life. If you come in without the bell, this garment was laced with bells and fruit because you don't want to roll up on God <laughs> and not ring the doorbell. Does this make sense? So the bell signifies that I'm here and I'm getting ready to come in because you don't go up. You cannot enter into a king's presence and without an announcement. Can't just show up at the White House. <laughs> Despite whether you like him or don't like him, we're going to get that out there. Yeah. <laughs> it don't matter who's in there. You just can't roll up on the White House. And just say, hey, man, I was just in the neighborhood. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't, can't do that. Some of y'all, you just can't roll up on some of y'all houses, that type of thing. I'm just in the neighborhood. No, no, no. Got to ring a doorbell. So the bells signify the mouth. And when I'm coming into the house of the king, I should always bring fruit and gifts. So the bell which was made out of gold is significant because it means that it is a gift. The fruit means that it is fruit. Now, let me, let me mess with y'all a minute. The Bible says, if you want to know a tree or if you want to know a person, 
yeah. You shall know them by their gifts. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh, not by that? Their fruit, by their fruit. That shall know them by their fruit. So, what about the people that are gifted? I said I know them by their fruit. You still got to know them by their fruit. Right. So, when I am operating in ministry, because you remember, this is all designed so that you can be minister unto the Lord. When I'm operating in ministry, I got a pomegranate bell, a pomegranate bell, a pomegranate bell. I don't have a pomegranate, a pomegranate, a pomegranate, and then a bell. I don't have a bell, 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 then a pomegranate. I got one that balances the other. Your fruit and your gifts should be in balance. Have you ever seen somebody that's real gifted? But the fruit that bear doesn't speak that they got a relationship with God. That's right. Right. But they're gifted. Oh yeah. Interesting. That's a problem. You ever seen somebody that got a lot of fruit? Mm -hmm. But boy, that sure can't teach worth nothing. <laughs> see, you, 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 you see what I'm saying? There has to be a balance. Pray with, stay with me, Sheila. I don't look at me like that. <laughs> so you you, you got to be balanced. <clears throat> you understand? I mean, I, I, I use myself as that. I, I love teaching. But it wouldn't be no good if I'm teaching good, but my fruit is saying something totally different. Does that make sense? Right. So you ain't got to be everything, but it should be in balance. Right. All right? So, and this hymn is important, man, because you remember the woman that was sick, issue of blood, oh, yeah. 12 years? Mm -hmm. What did she touch? That the hymn. Hymn. She, that hymn. she said, I need to touch his fruit and his gift. Mm -hmm. oh, mm. I need to touch his fruit and his gift. And his gift. What are the fruits of the spirit? Give me the first one. Love. Let <laughs> right, me get the first one. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, gentleness, patience. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So, so when I'm going, I need to know that you know if I need that. Okay. Now, if I need love, if I need peace, if I need joy. Then I need to make sure you got that in the hymn. You know, I need to make sure that's in a in a place that is complete, because the hymn is what complete the garment. Yes, Lord, let's get his peace. <laughs> the last thing is, that's the last thing that's complete on the garment is the hymn. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I don't know how far we're gonna get today. Okay. <laughs> pump, pump. Pump. Yeah, we we may yeah we, we well we have to make up some time next week. All right. So 35. the golden bell. Well, the golden bell. I'm at thirty four. The golden bell, it's okay. The golden bell, you can think that. The golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate upon the hem of the roundabout. Y'all see that? A golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate. It's, it's balanced. And it shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth unto the holy place before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when he cometh out, that he die not. <laughs> right. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold, Engrave upon it like the engravings of the signet holiness to the Lord. In other words, I've been set aside for God's use, consecrated. Verse 37 there, and thou shalt put it on a blue lace and thou, and that it may be upon the meter, upon the forefront of the meter it shall be. And it shall be upon Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the what? iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel shall hallow in all their holy gifts uh, and it shall be always upon his forehead and they that they may be accepted before the Lord and thou shalt embroider the coat of fine linen and thou shalt make the meter of fine linen y'all keep seeing this word linen mm -hmm. and thou shalt make the girdle of needlework do you know what linen is made out of flaxseed oh really linen is made out of flaxseed Interesting. I didn't need it. I just studied. <laughs> uh, it's made out of flaxseed. Anybody know what flaxseed? Anybody have seen flaxseed? Yes. Flaxseed, a lot of people eat it healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, but y'all got a lot of flaxseed now. <laughs> you know? yeah. so, um, and so, uh, so it's made out of flaxseed. So it's made out of a plant. So there's no bloodshed to get that garment. Mm. But his garment also has wool in it. And with the wool, there's still no bloodshed.
Because they don't kill the lamb to get the wool, they just shave it. Interesting. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Just want you to think. Shadows and types. Shadows and types. All right. So, where else up? 40. 40. You said 40? Yeah. And Aaron, uh, and for Aaron's sons, thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles, and bonnets shall make for them for glory and for, and for beauty. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron, thy brother and his sons, with him, and shall anoint them and consecrate them and sanctify them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from the loins, even unto the thighs they shall reach. Now, trying to figure out how to say this. Coach, I'm going to need your prayer to back up. Don't say nothing, though. Russell, don't you say nothing, either. There are certain things you can't wear on the outside if you don't have the right foundation <laughs> underneath. I'm looking at the ceiling now. If you don't have the right foundation underneath, certain things you can't, certain garments you can't wear because certain garments need foundations underneath. Got to get an amen. You're talking about like a flip, right? Let's talk about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm more girdle though. Oh yeah, you talking about like a spandex? <laughs> Spanx. Spanx. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Don't call it Spanx. Oh, new, new, new Testament. <laughs> new Testament. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So it's important when the foundation is right because the foundation affects the outer part, the appearance, mm -hmm. the appearance, and. The, everything. It's important. <clears throat> Don't say nothing, Coach. Okay? <laughs> coach, you ain't you on your own now. <laughs> All right? So, foundation <clears throat> is very important. All right? Let's go another little easier area. People that wear a lot of makeup, if they do it right, there is a foundation laid under it so that the rest of it will blend in right. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Am I saying smooth, that? Smooth, smooth that, that type of thing. And so I grew up in an area where foundation was important. They didn't have as good quality makeup y'all got these days. <laughs> they didn't have that foundation right. It's going to be some challenges. Uh -oh. all right, all right. So foundation is important. All I'm saying is foundation is important. Mm -hmm. All right? It's important. And we have to, and we live in a time now where people want to skip the foundation. Mm -hmm. And it has a different effect when okay. they skip the foundation. I leave oh, it at that. Right. All right, verse 41. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron his brother. I did, I read that one. Where did I stop? Uh, verse 42. And thou shalt make lemon. I read that one. Verse 43. And they shall be upon Aaron, upon his sons, when they come into the tabernacle, and when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place, that they bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statue, statue forever unto him and his seed after him. Now, real quick, real quick. Okay, it's a lot in this. I hope it's so much in there we want to be able to cover it all. But I do want to. I do want to cover a, a couple quick things. <coughs> First of all, let me open the floor. Did anybody see any representation of Christ in there where you say, man, that's a picture of Christ in the New Testament. That's a picture of Christ in the New Testament. Tell us to take on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. I like that. Okay. All right. All right. I like that. Let me, let me throw this at you real quick. The, the colors, gold represents deity. Represents deity and it represents faith. Deity and faith, the gold, color gold, all right? The blue represents divinity. And it's a, it's a, it's a divinity, but it's also is the grace component. Blue represents grace. Scarlet, wool, scarlet, excuse me, scarlet represents humanity. It represents love. How God suffered for us because he loved us. 
The purple represents mediator, uh, a mediatorship. In, in other words, uh, it, it's, it's royalty. It represents redemption. So purple is a, the color. A mediator is a person that stands between you and another higher authority. All right. A mediator. If you go to court, you can't just go to court. They want you to have a mediator or somebody that stands between you and the judge that communicates back and forth. Does that make sense? So Christ is our mediator. Christ is not only our mediator, but Christ also, as God, became human. So he is humanity, the red. Mm -hmm. He became, he was born of a woman. Mm -hmm. All right? Express his love. Christ also represents divinity, which is blue, grace. Christ uh, also represents deity because he's God. And it is his faith that allows us to even have faith. All right? And then uh, the fifth one, which is linen. I just want to talk about the linen component. It represents the righteousness, a uh, right standing. Linen represents right standing. It represents purity. All right? Now, <laughs> a whole lot in this, but just let me see if I can, where I can hit this at. Uh, first thing is, with, with God, with God, the... In man, sin entered and separated God from man. And the tabernacle is the place where God and man can re-intervene or reconnect. All right? So you have the tabernacle. which is the place where God and man can reconnect. Um, the high priest is the mediator between God and man. And he is where, how God set the system up so that they could <clears throat> re-intervene and reconnect. And this becomes the system now that God wants to use in 